In the years since the concept of legacy took root at the meeting of World War I veterans in Hobart, there have been many stories to tell. But the story that perhaps matters the most, and the one that its members hold as the most important, is the story of the legacy children. Behind this story are the ideals of John Gillibrand, born in 1872, who became a permanent soldier and rose to become one of Australia's most senior and highly decorated commanders during World War I. He was the man who inspired his fellow veterans with a romantic but serious vision of continuing the spirit of service and comradeship which he found at Gallipoli and on the fields of France. Their job, as he saw it, would be to support their former comrades in re-establishing themselves in business and to help the families of the permanently incapacitated and indeed those who did not return. Although records of Remembrance Club activities are sketchy, gymnasium training for children of ex-servicemen was one of many beyond direct family assistance. This eventually led to the formation of boys club activities in 1937. A pattern was established. The following year, a girls club was formed with spectacular success, attracting more than 100 girls who were provided but with uniforms by the Remembrance Ladies Guild, a group of women who were inspired to pitch in and support the mem members of Remembrance Club. World War II gave Hobart Legacy a new task, and in 1945 the club purchased the building in Macquarie Street, which has since become known as Legacy House. But no sooner had Friday night's children's activities begun at the new home then it became apparent that the family had already outgrown it. In the general community, legacy children were accorded a special place. During the visit of the newly crowned Queen Elizabeth and the Duke of Edinburgh in 1954, legacy children were given VIP allocation at a cenotaph ceremony which included the planting of the Poplar Avenue and long rehearsals and the building of skills at Legacy House were rewarded under the spotlight of public performances such as at the Town Hall public concerts. Plans were put in place for the biggest fundraising effort in the club's history to tear down a cottage at the rear of Legacy House and build a new hall which was opened in 1954. The appeal became a model for what was to become an annual Certificate of Adoption Appeal, the mainstay of public support for legacy until the 1980s. In the meantime, the tradition of school holiday camps for children have begun in earnest, and groups of children, usually boys or girls only, would be taken by bus to locations such as Port Arthur, where boys were billeted in Smith O'Brien's cottage. At Orford, the quarantine station on Bruny Island, Fort Direction, Taruna, and Austin's Ferry. The value of the camps was seen as threefold. Firstly, it gave children a new opportunity for self-development among their peer group. It gave legatees a great opportunity to get to know and understand their needs. And it gave their mothers a brief relief from the task of the single parent. During these years, many of the older children, wishing to maximize their time with legacy, were eager to take up the opportunity of joining a teenage group and extended their activities into weekend trips and social visits. Meanwhile, Friday night activities at Legacy House paralleled the popularity of camps, with attendance of up to a hundred children each week. Classes were held in 50-minute ships, 
from 5.30 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. And the variety of challenges was only limited by the interests of the children. The skills of legatees and the availability of volunteer instructors. Perennial activities included leatherwork, felt work, dressmaking, woodwork and gym activities as seen on this film taken in the 1960s, as well as confidence building skills such as judo and art of speech, individual legatees, coaching students, namely maths and English, etc. In 1961, major improvements were made to the hall. In 1961, major improvements were made to the hall, including a lounge for the use of widows and a gymnasium on the top floor, a popular venue for letting off a bit of steam and taking on a bit more self-confidence. In some cases, it was a bit binding of the family circle, mothers involved in fellowship with other widows in the lounge while their children learnt skills and enjoyed games under the supervision of their legatee, the family advisor. Today, the gym only reverberates to the faintest echoes of those years. Widows who use it for table tennis, the occasional revisit by those who have a story to tell for the new generation of legacy children, and by a social group for aerobic classes. Advancing through its 75th year with a small but important legacy of children whose fathers served in Vietnam and other post-World War II conflicts, Hobart Legacy continues to maintain its priority of providing opportunity for children of ex deceased ex-servicemen. Each year, young teenagers are sponsored for a nationwide summer camp run by Legacy in Western Australia at Brusselton. Two Tasmanian children are also selected each year to visit Canberra for the Anzac Day service with an emphasis on touring the national capital and taking part in a VIP tour of the Australian War Memorial. Our camps have grown from the earlier times when 20 and 30 seemed a formidable number. We reached the record figure of 100 at the Christmas camp of 1959. Finally, a lease was taken on Crown land at Conningham. While these films and photos show an important aspect of Legacy's work over the decades, they do not tell the most important part of the story. The availability around the clock of members to provide service and organise any assistance that may be required for the families of those who served our nation in war. This is a job that members of Legacy must handle to the best of their ability in the time they can make available with their own families and responsibilities in mind. It is not an obligation of war service. It is a remembrance of Jellybrand's ideal to continue that spirit of comradeship and service forged in the spirit of sacrifice for the nation in war. Hobart Legacy has pledged to continue that task for as long as there is a beneficiary who will gain by that help.